Atlas Fallen is just around the corner with a May 16th release date, and we got some new looks at gameplay. If you haven't seen this yet, there's actually some very quick gameplay shots in a trailer that came out. But we also have a blog uh, from PlayStation that's going into details about what this game is going to offer and many people were pretty excited to see this it sort of debuted in 2022 very quickly we saw some co-op gameplay battling with basically like sand and big huge open spaces and I I wanted to basically sort of walk through these new details because the more I look at this gameplay the more I think that there's actually a ton of potential to have a whole lot of fun with a very new style of sort of open world action adventure game where you're sort of using dust uh, and sand and obviously the May 16th release date. It's exciting because it's like right around the corner. That one actually kind of surprised me and I I like these blogs. I did one of these for my other channel. I read through some of the Horizon Forbidden West stuff for the DLC and I thought well, we've got this new gameplay trailer and now we've got some new details. I'm going to quickly walk through that blog with you guys because I do think this is one of the surprise games this year that really could kind of come out of nowhere they haven't marketed it all that much they haven't said much about it and we just finally got this new gameplay reveal trailer where it seems to promise a very sort of wide open game kind of concerned that it has that similar kind of forespoken feel where we're not really sure what the identity of the game is but I will say that the combat and the stylization of this game does feel like it has a little bit more of an identity than Forspoken ever did so I just want to take a look at this blog with you here how Atlas Fallen elevates sand play with super powered combat and exploration and I, I am noticing too you know with just two months away they you know they decided to start doing Uh, some information drops so they are kind of doing a a very small marketing window which that can sometimes be very very good a game can kind of surprise everybody and it's naturally it's exciting there's not been some huge marketing push to get everybody hyped up so hi everyone we are deck 13's sven hammer that's a great name sven hammer principal technical designer and leela grimaldi narrative designer we're bringing you atlas fallen on may 16th an epic and explosive action rpg where you'll play as a hero who rises against the reign of a tyrannical god you'll explore a semi-open sand covered world called atlas and battle mythical creatures Your heroic abilities come from a magical artifact, and we're here to tell you about its lore and mechanics. Now, obviously, with a name like Atlas and Atlas Fallen, I do think they might sort of be hard to discover. I I don't know if it's the greatest name, so I really hope the gameplay makes up for it, and I hope the game is a hit, because I'm I'm a huge fan of action-adventure games. In the world of Atlas, essence is at the core of everything. All organic things and each particle of its sand-covered surface are made of it. An ancient form of magic built its powers on essence, but its knowledge has been long lost. One day, our hero stumbles upon the remains of this magic in the form of a century-old artifact, the Gauntlet. The gauntlet gives its weaver control over the essence presence in their surroundings. Thus, they can manipulate essence grains found in objects, structures, elements, and change their structural integrity, resemble, or destroy them. So I'm hoping this sort of leads to sort of a more telekinetic-driven game. I don't know if we're just constantly going to be using sand, so let's, let's see what they say. Our hero will use it to shape the sand around them into various weapons during combat. The gauntlet's ability to manipulate its surroundings allows players to propel themselves into the air for epic vertical movements and fast traversal by sliding over the sand of atlas the gauntlet is a very versatile tool i did notice that in the gameplay uh, and in some of the things that we saw very very quick versatility of movement like a lot of verticality and just be able to sort of travel very very fast i do think that was something about forespoken and even games like the the hi-fi rush reminded me of sunset overdrive that forward momentum i think can get a little old sometimes and there was elements of that in forespoken that i didn't like so i i'm not sure if this game is going to do that there was sort of that, that like it's almost like surfing forward thing that they were doing in one of the clips that we saw but i will say that more and more games i think are going to experiment with quicker movement just to kind of experiment with traversing through an open world typically when you do like a really big open world game you got to give somebody like a horse 
or some way of getting around because if not it gets a little bit tedious just kind of running everywhere so I'll be interested to see how many more games try to do this sort of quick glide like traversal or parkour like traversal that we are seeing reforging the gauntlet hey I like that word reforge unfortunately for our hero they find a malfunction in the gauntlet forged by a mysterious being it was dismantled soon after its creation to prevent anyone from wielding its magic again two vital components are required the catalyzer and the shards the more essence comes into play the harder it is to control the role of the catalyzer is to gather essence and channel it into itself increasing its raw power tenfold this component has always been bro- oh, has been broken into three fragments called catalyst pieces which you'll find and have to put back together collecting a new catalyst piece allows you to reforge a part of the gauntlet unlocking a new powerful ability in the process each catalyst piece must be completed with specific essence infused objects called shards which enhance the hero's control over essence I can't tell if this is sort of like a three bosses thing. Are we going to be going to three areas? Like, if the, is this is this the the trajectory of the game's story, or is this just kind of what I'm doing to get stronger in the game? Throughout your journey in the world of Atlas, you will come across those catalyst pieces and shards, and get to gradually augment the capabilities of your gauntlet and progress further into the game. Well, there's our answer. So there's going to be a bit of sort of that power fantasy of getting stronger as you play, and it looks like there's the gauntlet right there, the shape-shifting weapon. Once you have the power to manipulate essence, you can shape the sand around you into various weapons. In order to do so, you must find the corresponding weapon resemblance. Oh, I'm sorry, remembrance. (laughs) I thought I said resemblance, and I changed halfway through the word, remembrance. Three weapons can be found throughout your journey, the dune cleaver, the sand whip, and the knuckle dust. They all grow more massive and powerful as you amass essence during combat. This process is called gaining momentum. See, here we go. We're going to get into that, like, you got to chain things together. I kind of got that sense. We'll see if it has anything to do with movement or just the combat itself. The dune cleaver is a heavy weapon that does wonders when it comes to dealing very impactful area of effect damage to your foes. Depending on the attacks you are performing, it will take one of two different shapes. One of them is an axe, ideal to perform large sweeps to deal a good amount of damage while destabilizing stabilizing your target. The other is a hammer specialized in crowd control. It creates large damage areas when slammed into the ground. I wonder how seamlessly you can sort of switch between all these, almost like you're taking on different forms or or different weapons, sort of, you know, depending on the enemies, the number of enemies or the boss or whatever it is that you're fighting. The sand whip combines the fast swings of a sword with the wide sweeps of a whip. It's your fastest, most efficient weapon at building up momentum and offers a wide variety of mobility. A great example of this is the sand whip hook, a move which allows you to latch onto your target and pull yourself toward it. This makes the sand whip a highly versatile weapon in that you can either use it to keep your enemies at a safe distance while building up momentum or use its high mobility to quickly in and out of a fight, allowing you to land devastating melee dagger hits that consume momentum over time. Finally, let's try to get this picture in the, in the shot for you. The Knuckle Dust. It's a fist weapon that covers both forearms and grows into additional pairs of arms as your momentum builds up. The Knuckle Dust shines in dealing high damage per second on single targets, which makes it a perfect choice to swiftly take out select targets. You can kind of see here just how big some of the fights are going to get that was something that i really appreciated in the original trailer was just how big some of the fights uh seemed like they were going to get you'll be able to wield two weapons at a time okay so here's our answer which allows you to create a unique loadout with your favorite moves in addition to these weapons your combat capabilities will be strongly enhanced by the use of essence stones those will enable you to perform unique and powerful attacks customizable to your preferred play style so This kind of reminds me of what they're doing with Jedi Survivor. You're going to have like five different stances, but you can only have two equipped at a time. That kind of gives you this sense of you kind of switch between the two. So you're going to pick ones that are complementary. I'm also curious how, you know, do you just go into the menu and change that? Do I have to go to a camp or something? Because is this something that you can go into an area and realize your current build's not cutting it? Can I just like pause and switch things around. I would be curious about how they 
allow you to change those things. Sand taming abilities outside of combat. The sand taming abilities granted by the gauntlet are not limited to its shape-shifting qualities. Here are three abilities that you'll also rely on, allowing you to traverse the world of Atlas with speed and power, and to interact with specific objects and structures. Air dash can be used while airborne, channeling the essence around you to propel yourself forward and dash through the air. Thanks to this ability, you can easily get a specific target, get to a specific target, reach the next structure to land on, surmount big chasms, and cover great distances rapidly. Raise enables you to lift imposing structures and objects buried in the ground thanks to the essence in the sand. This ability is crucial for you to uncover hidden treasures and sunken ruins, as well as create new paths over raised structures and even reveal pathways that have long been forgotten. So this is going to be that telekinetic stuff that I was hoping to see. I, it'll be nice to, to use some of this in combat as well. Crush gives you the ability to rip magical seals and chains apart, which you'll have access to Forbidden Grounds, a necessary step for you to progress in your journey and change the course of Atlas's history. Now, we hope you've enjoyed this introduction to this epic thing. Now, here's something you got to pay attention to, right? It's coming out on May 16th. You can pre-order now and get the bonus DLC Ruin Rising pack. Now, I'm curious how they already have... Uh, you know, DL- DLC planned. That's I'm, that sometimes is a turnoff for people. Uh, oop, that's probably not what you're looking for. The, the it looks like the pre-order page is not working right now. Um, yeah, that's a broken link. Oops, a daisy, folks. They'll have to want to. They they'll have to fix that and get that uh, get that going. Nice little artwork here. Uh, from the main page blog. So I I think this game looks like it's going to be really fun. Again, this could be one of those surprise hits given that they've marketed it in a very, very small and sort of meager way, and it's two months away. This is actually the most information we've had, the most gameplay that we've seen, and that is in light of the fact that, like, I think more and more companies are going to take this route. They're just not going to show us as much and let the game just kind of launch and hopefully that means they're trusting the game's quality and trusting the fun factor to really be the reason that people enjoy it I for one love these types of games I especially am excited because it's co-op this looks like one that maybe I could even play with my wife you know load it up on two different televisions and see how fun it is so if you like this quick video quick snapshot look at some gameplay details of Atlas Fallen please make sure and hit subscribe the bell button and all the other things leave a comment below so that way I can see you in the next video.